my other YouTube channel, CDHTV Gameplay Video, something happened during a game that I think is uh, worth talking about. So this is the board state. Pontus is casting Mal... Uh, Glinton Bacconeer with Malcolm in play and he's going to win the game. And no one has interaction, except one Pact of Negation that Adam casts without being able to pay the 5 mana for it in his upkeep. He could have done that if he did cast his Mox Diamond that he didn't do because he was going to collect the oof and why put Mox Diamond into play if you're gonna oof the game. But he casts the Pact of Negation anyways, knowing that he will die at the start of his turn. So let's talk about that. Something we actually did do quite a lot in the gameplay video. Link up there in the corner if you want to take a look at the match and hear what we said during, during that game. But let's step a bit back and just talk about it in general. Not the specific situation, but pacting without being able to pay for it in general. So casting a pact of negation without being able to pay the 5 mana is usually considered a spite play. And there are arguments that are saying... I mean, I'm playing to my outs, I should use it because I will live longer casting this thing. But in general, you don't really survive one bit. I mean, you're gonna die eventually. Either you die to the Pact, or you die to the Glintorn, or whatever combo that you're Pacting. But then again, if you're gonna die to the Pact, you're gonna die to the Glintorn, does it honestly matter? Pacting or no Pacting? Now the normal answer is, you don't pact, because the game will end, and you get to play a new game. Because if you pact, the three other players will continue the game, while you have to sit and wait for them to finish the game, so you can play the second game. So obviously you don't pact, so you can be part of the next game faster. But when you go into tournaments, the discussion becomes a little bit different. And I wanna say that I have seen players cast Pact of Negation and King make players intentionally during a tournament because seatings. Some players have more points during a tournament than another player. And if you King make the person with lower points, your chance of getting into the top 16 actually goes up. So now you're King making dying with the intent of making sure that you have a better chance winning the tournament. Is that wrong? It could be, I actually don't know. And part of why I'm making this video is to bring up the subject. This is something we should talk about. But I want to go back a little bit to this one. Play to your outs. Casting Pact will make sure you don't die now, even though you're gonna die later. During the turn cycle, before your turn, there's always the tiny incremental percentage chance that someone is randomly casting a Wheel of Fortune. Like that could theoretically happen, or any form of wheel or any form of effect that make you accidentally draw some cards. If you get to do that, you might be really lucky drawing into Elvish Spirit Guide, which could help you pay for the pact, or well, any form of ritual that you can cast in instant speed to survive the pact. So the argument play to your outs indicates here that you're increasing your chance to win by like a, m a tiny percentage, which I could argue is like super low and unlikely of actually happening. But the chance actually exists. It's very hard to dismiss this potential argument. Like it could happen, you, you could survive the pact. The chance is really low though. There's also put the potential that someone draws Stifle before your turn. And you can make like a deal with the table like, okay guys, if you draw Stifle, save me. And if you do that, and promise to do that, I will pack this and uh, perform Seppuku for the team. This is a very like, yeah, it could theoretically happen, but the percentage is once again extremely small. Also, you have to have like a political discussion, you need to trust those people, and yeah. There might be some trustworthy people that will actually make you stay alive. I should also point out that sometimes you want players to stay alive in the game. You might have hate bears, stacks effects that I want you to have in the game. And if you die to your pact, your stacks effects will disappear, so I might save your life with stifle. So there's an argument to say that yes, you could be saved. The percentage here is absolutely really minimal, but it is there. Another word discussion is play to your persona, play to your personality and reputation. What does that actually mean? So we normally play this game with the same people over and over and over again. Like your local game store, you go and play against the same people once a week, right? 
usually. Now there are random games against the random people you're never gonna face again, like this will be the only time in your entire life that you and this person play against each other, but normally we play against the same people over and over. And something that I do, and I like follow this religiously, is I stand by every single deal that I've ever made in a game, because I wanna be able to make that deal again in a new game in the future game with the same person potentially. And if you cast a Pact of Negation and die to it over and over again, you're telling people that you're gonna do this and I'm gonna interact with you and stop your combo even though I'm gonna die to the Pact. And this game is a really good example of that. Pontus actually cast a Gitaxian Probe and get to see the Pact. We were closing our eyes and he got to notice that Adam had a Pact of Negation in his hand that he couldn't pay for. So Pontus realized Adam doesn't actually have an interaction, he can't counterspell Glintorn and he cast the Glintorn, knowing that there is a Pact of Negation in Adam's hand that Adam can't pay for and survive. But casting the Pact here is telling Pontus that you can't do that, again in the futuristic next game you and I are gonna be in when you get Taxian Probe and see my Pact in the hand. Like, that will eventually happen. I don't know how long it's gonna take, but eventually Pontus and Adam will sit down in a game together and Pontus will cast a Gitaxian probe, notice that Adam have Pact in his hand, no mana for it, He can Pontus can now cast his Wincon, but Adam did cast Pact in that previous game. Do you really wanna combo off and win in that situation? Like the action of pa casting Pact creates that thought in Pontus and might make Pontus not go for it. Or will he? really actually hold back? Honestly, I don't know. It's really much up to the people in person in this situation, and the rest of the board state in the situation as well, as it all comes down to people on individual basis. As in the end, everyone just reacts differently here. And somewhere down the line there are arguments for casting the pact. Even though, like, most of arguments just increase your win chance by, like, a non-existing percentage, like a super tiny percentage increase, but it is an increase. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes you, you're increasing your chance of winning the game by a tiny incremental bit. But what about not casting the pact? Just doing nothing? So now we need to talk about kingmaking. Now one important thing is that CDH has, as a multiplayer game, a lot of kingmaking in it, no matter what we do. In the end, in multiplayer games, regardless of whatever multiplayer game you could think of, your win rate is determined by other players' actions, something you can't really control. Now, we could discuss how much you can actually control that with social communication and deal making, so there is a possibility of actually controlling that. But that's for another video. And in the end, we can make a lot in this format. Whether we want to or not, mostly by accident and just a byproduct of how the game is being played in general. But why do we hate on this king making? The simple reason is this is intentional and this is personal. Most of the times when you king make in or I don't want to say that when you king make when you accidentally help a player by attacking or hurting another player interacting with something but letting another thing pass. All of that is by accident and threat assessment. But when you're doing this to make prevent someone from winning, that becomes more targeted and focused on that person on a more personal level. Because you, I'm saying you can't win. And I'm gonna sacrifice myself to prevent you from winning. And that just opens up the discussion of coercion. I think that's how you pronounce it. I think this is how you spell it. This is a weird English word and I'm not super familiar with. But it basically means that me and another player have a secret agreement with each other that we're gonna make sure that one of us wins. It doesn't matter which one, we will share the prize money together. And this is a huge potential problem. And it's really hard to actually figure this out as a judge for a CDH tournament event. Because as king making is in CDH, we always do it by accident, not intentional. And it's like you can find arguments where I'm doing this not with intent to king make, but with the intent of threat assessment on the most actions. A very simple example here: you have a mental misstep in your hand. Someone cast Sol Ring, and then they pass turn. You didn't use mental misstep. Hmm. Then someone cast Vampiric Tutor, and now 
you mental misstep that thing. Now this kind of look like coercion and some favorism, but there are arguments where you think that the vamp tutor is more worthy to counterspell depending on what form of commander they are playing. There's a lot of potential arguments in threat assessment that can prove or give an argument that you're not king making and you don't have a coercion. But here it's very hard to make that argument. I mean, you're dying here. You're literally sacrificing yourself to make sure that that specific player doesn't win the game. Would you do the same if the other player over there would have gone for the win and would have attempted to win? Huh. <laughs> and that's where the problem kinda lies in. This is obvious, like actual taking an action in kingmaking. It's not accident, you're doing an literally action that is kingmaking in some form of way. But do you remember that I talked about kingmaking in tournaments? So let's just create a theoretical tournament example. We're very close, like this is the last game to top 16 and we're sitting down, someone is about to win and if this person wins, you don't go to top 16. But if you counterspell this and this person doesn't win and one of the other two players win, they go to top 16. And you are also going to top 16 with them because of how tournament uh, standings is currently sitting. Is it okay to king make now? Once again I actually don't know. I have seen people actually do this though. And this is literally an argument where you're playing to your outs. Not in this game specifically, but in the tournament in general. As usual when it comes to subjects like this, this video doesn't have the answer. I literally just want to bring up the subject, because this is something we need to talk about in my opinion. And I would love to hear what your thoughts on the matter is. And I really hope other content creators will bring this up too. And that we have some discussion about this matter on other social platforms. But I should end the video with this. Most playgroups have social contracts of how that specific playgroup wants to play CDH and the game in general. And that playgroup could find their individual answer of how they want to do it. And if you want to be part of that playgroup, you should follow their way of playing when playing with them. But then outside that playgroup, play like you normally do. And the reason for that is simple. Coexistence. And you could also argue group harmony. Because in the end, guys, we're playing this game because of the most simple reason, fun. We're here to have fun. And we're not here to make people unhappy. Okay, can, we kind of are here to make people unhappy, like playing stacks. We're kind of we're kind of here to destroy people and play competitively. But we're not here to offend people or accidentally cause personal attacks on a specific person. Or create an unfriendly game. And this could accidentally do that. I hope you liked my video and that it gave you some food of thoughts. Take care, guys. I hope to talk more about this in the future. See you in the next video.